Let's further discuss the Russia-US agreement on ridding Syria of chemical weapons with Richard Becker. He's anti-war activist with the International Answer Coalition, who joins me live now from San Francisco. Richard, uh, a lot seems to have been achieved in a very little time. Uh, people, of course, will be asking, why on earth hasn't any of this been achieved before now? <clears throat> Well, I think that we can see that the U.S. government very quickly grabbed at the opportunity to find a way out of a very, contra for them, a very contradictory uh, situation. And uh, we should recall that just two weeks ago, it looked like uh, military action was imminent. Uh, we Mass were in the streets that day. We were ex had been Mass expecting that the uh, the Obama administration, the President Obama, would be announcing that day that military strikes were taking place. Instead, he announced that he was going to Congress. And when that didn't work, and in fact, uh, he and uh, Secretary of State Kerry became more and more isolated, uh, they jumped at the opportunity uh, to find a way, at least temporarily, out of this situation when Foreign Minister uh, Sergei Lav Lavrov made the proposal uh, on Monday. So they are, want to very quickly uh, put this on the back burner at this point, uh, despite all the bluster and uh, kind of arrogant talk that we hear from Secretary of State Kerry. They suffered a very serious setback in what their plans were to, to go to war, to launch military strikes against Syria, and now uh, have moved very quickly uh, to try to uh, have some resolution of this issue, as I say, at least on a temporary basis. And here's Obama just, just very recently making a, a tough stand by saying, even after these very, very delicate and intense negotiations, saying, look, if they don't comply, we will resort to military intervention. Well, how helpful is that sort of talk after it's already been agreed, as I say, after very, very tough negotiations? Well, I think that that's uh, uh, actually more of the spin to try to uh, protect the image of the president and the uh, and of the administration. Uh, this uh, uh, trying to look tough. Well, they they tried to look tough, and they found themselves extremely isolated because of the tremendous opposition to a new U.S. war in the Middle East from around the world and in, from inside the United States. Very pervasive. Uh, uh, opposition to this, and they, despite all the propaganda, uh, the, the huge PR effort that they wheeled out uh, beginning about three weeks ago, they were unable to shift that or, or to break down that opposition. So uh, really, this was a, a kind of uh, a, a great opportunity presented to them, what uh, Sergei Lavrov presented last Monday, uh, but at the same time as wanting to grasp it very quickly. They also do not want to look weak, uh, but clearly they want out of a, a very difficult and very contradictory situation that they found themselves in. But none of this is actually going to end the conflict, is it? More innocent people are going to die, and the end goal is for a peaceful settlement in Syria. And yet, despite the cooperation we've seen between Russia and Moscow, there are major divisions over that ultimate goal, aren't there? Oh, yes, there are major, and you know, the, uh, the United States uh, policy uh, consists of different elements, which include the sanctions, which hurt the people there, uh, arming and funding, uh, training the so-called Free Syrian Army, uh, and coordinating the intervention of other countries, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey, in this war uh, against the government of Syria. And because really what the objective of the United States is, is to bring about regime change, regardless of the uh, fact that they've been deterred uh, from an immediate military strike, that remains their objective, clearly is, is their objective. All right. And clearly the opposition in, yeah, yeah, quickly, the, clearly just the you, opposition in yeah, Syria, you're, it, you're talking about the opposition uh, there. Is, so there, just, is yeah. opposed to this agreement. Exactly. They oppose this agreement because they can't win without, foreign inter without U.S. intervention. So is it really seriously significant that the Free Syrian Army, for example, have rejected this initiative to rid um, Assad of the chemical weapons? Will that be a major stumbling block or not? Well, I, I don't think that we know. I mean, I, I think that they want the agreement to fail. They didn't want the agreement at all. And for the reason that I, I was just referring to is that they cannot win, they cannot achieve victory 
without the intervention of the U.S. Uh, and, and, and perhaps other, uh, its other NATO allies, uh, they do not have the capacity on their own to win, and that's why they were uh, so ardently hoping for uh, military strikes, massive military strikes, by the United States against the government forces. Richard Becker, thank you very much indeed. Anti-war activist, a member of the steering committee for the International Answer Coalition, live on RT. Great to hear your thoughts. Thank you.